What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the second beta of macOS Sequoia. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. On my Apple MacBook Air, it required me to have 3.33 gigabytes available on my hard drive in order to install. And something new before we go continue is that we got some new text right here. It says, once downloaded, this update will take about 20 minutes to install. This is from the previous beta, but it applies to updating to this beta. So you will see this before you update to this beta. All right, what is new here inside of macOS Sequoia Beta 2? We got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. All right, so the first feature is iPhone mirroring. That has finally been enabled here inside of Beta 2. And upon opening it for the first time, you will see this splash screen. It says your iPhone on your Mac, get access to your iPhone apps, view and act on notifications, and no need to reach for your phone. However, you do need to reach for your phone, I think, one time. It will ask you to unlock your phone. And once you do that, iPhone mirroring will be ready to use. And now, I'm going to disconnect my iPhone from continuity camera since that's a requirement. Alright, I have disconnected my iPhone from continuity camera. And the first thing you will see once you get started is that you need to enter your Mac password in order to enter iPhone mirroring. However, you could easily bypass this by automatically authenticating just to get into iPhone mirroring quicker. You can use Touch ID or just enter your Mac's password and it works just fine. And you have your iPhone on your Mac just like that. And you got a lot of things in here that you could just do. You could just use your phone on here basically. That's the whole point of iPhone mirroring. However, there are a couple of things I don't like about iPhone mirroring. So if I were to try to close the app, you just can't do it with this home bar. You can't do three finger swipe. And if I do three finger swipe, it opens up mission control. I just wish we could just do the three finger swipe just like we can on iPadOS. Pressing command H will hide the app. That one's not a big deal. However, there are a couple of keyboard shortcuts that you can use. Uh, command one will close the app. Command two will enter the app switcher. And command three will open up a spotlight search. And you also have these icons up here. So this one goes to the home screen. This one goes to the app switcher. And you can do everything on your phone, just like subscribing to the channel. We are really close to 2,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. Oh yeah, and on your MacBook's trackpad, you could do two finger swipe to go through your pages, just like you can on iPadOS. And you can even swipe through with just your fingers, just like this on your trackpad, just like you should be able to. And best of all, my iPhone is locked right here. And if I want to take control, I just pick up my phone and then it will just say your iPhone's in here. So you, you can't use iPhone mirroring while using your iPhone at this moment. But once I lock my phone and then hit try again, iPhone mirroring will work again. However, I set my settings to make it so I need to enter my password every time. So I just enter my password and now I can just use my phone once again. Now the next thing has to do with your notification center. So once you connect to iPhone mirroring once, you will get all of your notifications from your phone. So right in here, I have all my threads notifications and also have the mental health notification. So if I click on it, I'll be able to interact with that app and will open up iPhone mirroring. Now the next thing is inside of system settings. So general is now the new main page that has been like that since beta one. However, we have a brand new banner up here it has the system settings icon and it says general, major overall setup and preferences for this Mac, so the software updates, device language, airdrop, and more. So Apple just tells you what the general tab does. They do kind of tell you with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it isn't as prominent, but it looks a lot more prominent when you go into general. And accessibility isn't as prominent once again. I wonder if they would make it look like this or expand all of them to make it look just like it does in general, I'm not sure. But yeah, this is the new look for system settings. It's coming along pretty good. Now the next thing is if we scroll down a little bit, you will see that iCloud is just right here now. It's a lot easier to access your iCloud settings now since they added it down here with all these internet services. But you can still access it from your Apple account and then iCloud. It shows you just the same thing. I don't know why it is down here, but I guess it's just easier to get down here, I guess. Now, should you update to macOS Sequoia Beta 2? So right here, I have Sequoia Beta 1's Geekbench score. We have a 2358 on the single core and an 8167 on the multi-core. And if I were to show you Beta 2's, we got a 2362 on the single core, which is a good bit higher, and an 8466 on the multi-core, which is also a good bit higher. Now let's take a look at RAM usage, since I think this is an important step that we should consider when looking at macOS. Alright, so right here is beta 1, where you can see our memory usage is 4.52 gigabytes. 
And here is beta 2 where our memory usage is 4.63 gigabytes. So it's a little bit higher unfortunately. And the thing taking up the most memory are my drivers for my mouse. Which makes sense because I want to use this nice mouse with my MacBook. So it is a little bit higher here, but it isn't too bad. And I'm sure memory usage will get better as all the betas come out. So should you update to macOS Sequoia, I would say hold off if you're on macOS 14. If you already installed it on your main device, go ahead and install it. Now here are some bugs that I still have. So certain widgets aren't appearing for the widget editor. So for example, my widget app Willy Widgets is only showing iPhone widgets at the moment. We'll have to see if that can get fixed or not, but I'm sure we'll be able to get fixed. Yeah, it's basically all, the only bug that I'm really having. Let me know your experience down in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. And you can watch iOS up here if you haven't quite yet. Download my apps Willy Widgets, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.